All right, welcome back to this 2.5D text animation tutorial. So this is part two. Part number one is over on the Filmmakers channel and that's where I go into the basic 2D text animation side of this. And then part two, which is here, this is where we're gonna learn about the 3D camera moves that brings this 2.5D text style to life. So let's get on with it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make another comp. You could pre-compose this or you could come up here and go new composition. I'm going to do a new composition. So we're going to call this one main comp. Hit OK. So now we need to drag in the simple 2D text animation that we've just created. I'll drop that in the center here. And it's time to animate the camera and create the 3D camera moves that you've all waited so patiently to see. So we're going to right click, we're going to go new camera. Default settings are fine. Hit OK, that's all good. And then we're going to make sure that our text animation layer is, is set to be a 3D layer, so click on here, 3D layer. Now let's just move the camera around and take a look at it from a couple of different angles. So what you can use is this little tool up here, which is the orbit around tool. You can just drag the screen around like this, and you can create a cool 3D view straight away. Now this doesn't look very good, and basically what's happened is the 3D animations that we created in the pre-comp have just been squashed. They haven't been kept into the main comp. And the reason for that is because we need to tick this little magic box down here. And it's the one under this sun icon here. And this is probably the most important part of this tutorial. If, if you take nothing else away, then this is the thing you need to learn. So when we tick this, what it does is it basically keeps the 3D stylization and the 3D transformations that we created within the pre-comp and it keeps them alive in this main comp. So I'm gonna tick that and straight away you can see all those 3D layers, those lovely 3D layers that we created are now visible. Turn that off, it's all flat and rubbish. Turn it on, boom, we've got a wicked 3D layer. And that is the most important part of this tutorial, because now when we play this through, you can see these letters are flying in from above just the way that we want them to. All right, so now let's start animating the camera. Now, the important thing to understand about this is the difference between point of interest and position. So you've got two things that you can animate on the camera. You've got the point of interest, which is basically what's in the center of the screen, and then the position, and that's where the camera actually is. So let me just show you two views so you can get an understanding of that. On the left-hand side, we've got the active camera, and on the right-hand side, we're just gonna take a look at the front. So the point of interest, if we have a look at that, that is this little cross thing here, and that is what the camera is basically focusing on. So we're gonna move that around like that. We can change the part of the image that the camera is looking at. Now the position is where the camera is like in 3D space, but it will always keep that point of interest in the center of the view. In fact, if you understand this, it's quite easy to create these cool text animations because you don't actually need to do so much with the position. It's mainly just the point of interest that you need to animate. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to animate the point of interest and move along the word filmmakers. And then when the 2.5D comes in, we're going to pull out and we're going to get a nice wide view of everything. So what I need to do is I need to animate my point of interest. Um, so where it is currently is a good starting point. So I'm going to hit keyframe there for point of interest and drag this to the start. And then when awesome comes in, about there, I'm just gonna set another keyframe, drag my point of interest over to the center there. That's good. And then we'll just leave that point of interest there for a little bit until the 2.5D comes in. And then when the 2.5D gets to its final position, we'll put another keyframe in. And then we're gonna pull back. So we've got about 10 keyframes further forward. And then we'll add like our final keyframe for the point of interest, which will be sort of in the center like that. You just play that through, it doesn't look great straight away, but you can see the way that we've animated the point of interest like this is already creating the kind of motion that we want. I think when the 2.5D comes in, it's a bit slow. Just tweak the positions of these keyframes, drag these two a lot closer together. So it's just moving these keyframes around and you can see now when I play it through, we move along the filmmakers and then the 2.5D comes in and boshes everything upwards and our point of interest responds. And that looks pretty good to me. Now what I'm just gonna do as well is I'm gonna ease these keyframes, so select them all. I'm gonna just jump into the graph editor so you can have a look at them. And you can see at the moment they're all moving linearly and then you get this kind of unpleasant change of velocity here. I'm just gonna select all of these keyframes and we're gonna come down here and we're gonna hit easy ease. And you can see that's just smoothed out those curves there, so now it's gonna flow nice and smoothly between these different points. So now we've done our point of interest, we can start playing around with the position of the camera. And because we've already animated the point of interest to be focusing on the right thing at the right time, we've got a lot of scope to play around with the position and create some really cool, interesting angles. So straight away, if I move the position of the camera like this, our animation's still gonna look good, but we've got a different angle on it. This is what I was trying to explain at the beginning. If you understand how the point of interest and the position work together, you can create really cool animations like this that will always look good and you don't have to worry about stuff being clunky and keyframes not really working. 
And we know because we've already animated the point of interest. When we move the position like this, it's gonna keep the stuff that we wanna see in the center of the screen, which is great. I want my final view to be quite far back. Something like that. There we go. That looks good at the end. Gonna set a keyframe for position there. And then I'm gonna to come to the beginning and I wanna be up nice and close on the word filmmakers. So let me just zoom in and maybe come around like that and then hit play on that. So just fine tuning these keyframes, we start nice and close on filmmakers and then we pull back to this final position here. And that looks pretty cool. So it's a combination of animating the camera position and the camera point of interest that's gonna give you this overall effect. So when I go back into two views, you can see up the top here, we've got the animation of the point of interest, which is going along the line and then down into the center. And then on the right here, we've got the animation of the position and it's just moving along this line here. And it's that combination of the two different things, the animation of the point of interest and the animation of the position that's gonna give you this overall effect. And then the final thing that I would do to this as well is I would just make sure I've switched on motion blur. So I'm gonna jump back into the pre-comp. Just wanna select all my layers and make sure they've got the motion blur icon ticked, which was on this one here. And also that we've got motion blur enabled in the main composition here. Jump back into the main comp and make sure that we've got motion blur ticked on as well. It's kind of subtle, but when we play this through, we're gonna get a nice natural motion blur, which just looks a little bit nicer. And that's it when it comes to this 2.5D text animation. Obviously I've done a really simple example here. Uh, let me just jump back into one of the more complicated ones that I did for the Creator Circuit video. You can see on the left, the final result is very much the same thing. We've got our 2D text. It's got the two different layers. It's got the foreground layer and the background layer. And then our camera over here on the right, we just play you through the camera. So you can see the camera again is doing the same thing. We've got our point of interest animated along this line here. So it's moving around like that. And then we've got our position animated as well separately. Now what you can do, just a little quick tip, if you're having trouble with your position, you can see what I've done here is I've separated the dimensions, X, Y, and Z. This is my X and my Y and my Z or my position axis. So what you need to do is you'd right click and you go separate dimensions. And that just means that you can animate the X and the Y and the Z coordinates separately. Sometimes you'll find your keyframes just aren't looking very nice. You need to go in there and you need to fine tune the specific axes individually. Uh, so knowing about this separate dimensions trick is really, really handy for that. But if you're doing a simple example like the one that we've done here, if you go into position keyframes, you can see we've got nice smooth movements between our X and our Y and our Z, and we don't need to separate the dimensions. It's gonna work fine, just like that. My number one top tip with this kind of animation is just keep the overall number of keyframes to a minimum. Don't have too many. The more keyframes you put in, the more complicated stuff starts to get and the longer it's gonna take for you to make it look good. All right, and that is it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you've been able to follow it okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually putting the project file uh, on my Shopify store. So you can take a look there and you can have a look at exactly what I've done. And I've also included these other compositions that I did for the Creator Circuit video as well. So you can take a look at them in more depth if you're interested in finding out how to create the slightly more complicated animations. And the final thing I'm gonna show you is these slightly more complicated web page animations that I also did as a part of this Creator Circuit video. These are a little bit more complicated, but the technique is exactly the same. You can see the animated camera, and then I've just played around with the position and the point of interest keyframes and created the 2.5D animated style in exactly the same way. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was easy to follow. Please do come over to my channel, which is AR Visual, for more tricks and tips just like this.